Hello everybody, welcome to the Scissortail Farmers Market Cooking Series here at the Jones Assembly today, uh, sponsored by Shape Your Future. Uh, obviously, it would have been more ideal to do this at the Farmers Market at the Scissortail Park, but unfortunately with the quarantine going on, we're here at the Jones Assembly Kitchen to do our first series. Uh, today, we'll be doing a pan roasted chicken uh, with the sauté root vegetables, uh, with a little bit of turnip, uh, chimichurri, with a little turmeric quinoa salad. Uh, just something very healthy for your heart, something unique and a little bit different that you guys can make with a very little bit, uh, very limited amount of ingredients. So this is something I picked up today. The chicken today here is from War Family Farms here in Blackburn, Oklahoma. Uh, very natural chicken. And for you guys at home, chicken is very, very important to get some good chicken when you go out shopping. But like you see, this chicken is very nice. Uh, you can see the flesh. You know, there's not a lot of water in them. They're nice and dry. You can see this is a great chicken to cook with. Uh, today, we're going to use the breast and the thigh uh, to get this going. So I'm going to turn the heat on right here for our pan. Uh, it is very important when you cook the chicken at home that you tap the skin dry uh, to create that nice crust and the chicken so again those uh, nice to get those nice golden brown crusty skin on top. Okay, and you want to very season it very generously. Make sure you want to cover the whole chicken. Okay, here's the airline chicken, and we'll be using the thighs also. I always like to do a little variety of the chicken so you can get a different you know flavor, different texture from the different parts of the chicken uh, for you to enjoy. Uh, so I got the heat going high right here. You always want to make sure that the oil is hot before you drop whatever protein or vegetables you want to cook in. Because if you drop whatever you're cooking into the pan while the oil is still cold, they'll start absorbing the oil and it wouldn't uh, cook as beautifully in the pan. Uh, so as your pan gets hot, I'm going to drop a little bit of olive oil here and get that going. I'm going to drop a piece of the airline chicken. And if you hear that sizzle, that many is ready to go. If you don't hear a sizzle, if it's just kind of sitting there, the oil's not hot enough yet, just pull back and wait a couple more seconds until the oil is warm. And I'm not going to add the thighs yet because the thighs are a little smaller. Uh, it'll take a little bit less time to cook. So we're going to start with the breast. And once you drop it in there on high heat, you can bring it down to like a medium high heat. Uh, that way it doesn't burn the skin before I actually cook the chicken. So as we let it go, uh, for the quinoa salad part, uh, it's very simple. I took some chopped shallots, chopped garlic, sauteed in a little bit of uh, olive oil, add in like a little teaspoon of turmeric. Uh, then what I do is I drop in uh, one cup of quinoa. Uh, I'm using a tricolor quinoa today and toast it in the pan with the oil and those uh, garlic shallots and the spices. And once you get a little bit toasted, you're gonna add in two cups of water and just uh, turn your heat down to simmer and just put a lid over it until the liquid is gone. And the quinoa is cooking. As you see, the liquid is almost all absorbed. I'm gonna let it go just for a little longer so it's not too wet, okay? And as the chicken's going, I'm gonna drop the thighs now. And get that beautiful color also. I actually deboned the T-bone the thighs, just because the, if you have the thigh in there, it takes a little bit too long to cook. Uh, and that way you don't have to worry about having like a pink uh, chicken bone in the middle of the chicken thigh. So I've got this going. Uh, obviously everybody at home wants to get a nice golden brown skin, but as you see, the chicken here is starting to brown the skin a little bit, but still not quite there yet. The trick is to get a good skin really to dummy proof it, you know, you know, as you see, you gotta really be good at controlling the fire when you get one of get the nice sear on a chicken or a fish at home. But for those of you who aren't professional chefs, really the easiest way to, to achieve that at home is once you get the skin nice and starts to get nice and golden brown, I wonder whether if it's your chicken breast or your uh, skin on fish that you're cooking at home, to get to that point, you just leave it with the skin side on the pan and you throw it in the oven until the rest of the protein cooks up. 
and you I promise you when you're at home when you do that and when you throw it in about 350 to 400 degrees at home and you'll achieve that perfect crispy skin every single time at home also okay so as we wait for the chicken to cook up we're going to start working on the uh, roasted root vegetables And today here we got some uh, turnips, beets, and the grains. Uh, this is actually from the Acadian family from Cobb, Fort Cobb in Oklahoma. Uh, as you see, these greens are very beautiful. We got all different kinds. We got Mizuna, we got green leaves, we got red leaves. Uh, we got a little bok choy greens in here. Uh, we also got some beautiful turnips. These uh, root vegetable greens are actually what we're gonna use to make our chimichurri. Uh, and we're also actually gonna take these stems of the beets, saute them up, and the greens also. They really have a lot of good flavor. Now, I like to use the stems to get, add a little bit of texture when you're eating roasted vegetables or sauteed greens because everything's very mushy, and, and a lot of times that's, that's the reason that people get turned away from vegetables because of the texture when they're cooked. Uh, but actually, when you saute these greens and these uh, stems, they actually add a great texture to the dish also. So people who don't really like vegetables normally will actually get to enjoy them also. So we're gonna prepare these uh, ingredients right here. Uh, one biggest thing about uh, turnips, when you're preparing turnips, okay, I'm gonna save these and use that for the chimichurri. But if you see the turnips, there's actually almost like two layers of skin. If you see the very center, there's actually like, there's a very, I'm not sure if you guys can see, there's a slight line you can see. So that part is actually very fibrous, and you actually wanna, when you peel it, you wanna get into that second layer of skin and make sure you take that off to really make sure uh, you prepare the turnips properly. Otherwise, they'll be very fibery, and it wouldn't be very good, okay? And as you see, you got to saute those up. I just kinda, Dice up the turnips and beets to similar sizes so they cook and, uh, they cook evenly. We got this pan going. We got a little too hot. Let's cool down for a second. Add a little bit of oil. We're gonna start roasting these beautiful turnips and beets right here. You want to get a nice color and start kind of caramelizing the vegetables, okay? Now it's going to get a nice color on them. I'm just going to kind of season with salt and pepper as I go. Uh, you always want to kind of season as you go to really build those flavors together. We got these going. Gonna let that saute up a little bit. Uh, as we're doing that, I believe our quinoa has been cooked. As you see, all the moisture is gone. Uh, just gonna take a fork or a spoon, just kind of fluff it up. Uh, it's very good for your heart. Or it does be a great filler too when you're trying to eat healthy. And when you're just eating vegetables and just trying to eat, you know, chicken or fish, you know, you could really suffer because being hungry all the time. But you got to add these grains in there to really fill you up, but still keep you healthy. Uh, the one thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to sit in with a little bit of salt and pepper. Like I said before, just kind of layering the flavors as we go. And we have these uh, root vegetables sauteing right here. Okay, and as we wait for that, we're going to make our pesto or our chimichurri now. Okay, uh, it's very simple. Really with the chimichurri, normally you use oregano, parsley, different kind of herbs. Uh, for this one, actually, we're gonna use our turnip greens that we chopped up earlier uh, from our root vegetables that we got right here. Uh, so I just wanna take, take one shallot. I'm gonna take like, say, two cloves of garlic. Just gonna smash it up. And we're gonna add that to our little blender right here. Uh, I'm gonna add like a tablespoon of red wine vinegar to add a little acid to the dish. Uh, what I'll do is 
I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil to start. Then here, add our turnip greens, okay? Turnip greens are actually very sweet and doesn't have like a bitterness like some greens might. Uh, so it's actually a very uh, pretty neutral flavor. Uh, it's got a little pepperness to it, but it's mostly sweet, uh, just refreshing green taste when you taste it. So I'm going to get this going. Hey, when you're at a farmer's market or you know out just picking vegetables, like don't be afraid to try like the leaves or the roots. I mean, everything's edible that comes out of those vegetables. So you can try to be creative with it. it make salads out of the radish green instead of just getting romaine, you know, lettuce that you typically get or that spinach green that you're always used to. When you add these different kind of greens, whether it's kale or beet tops or whatever it is, they really have a lot of different flavors going on. So just in a simple salad, it can make a huge difference in flavor. Okay. So as we get going, I'm going to season with a little bit of salt pepper again. Uh, and it's going to slowly drizzle into olive oil right here. Here we go. I'm going to let this come together a little bit. See this beautiful color you got here. Okay. And with those, just really that was only four ingredients in this chimichurri dish right here. Uh, just from a very simple turnip top that we got from the Scissor Tail Park Farmer's Market. Uh, and one thing I'll do, I just want to give it a taste. A little bit more salt. And that's a great thing about going to Farmer's Market, you know, with your family is you can great, get all these great ingredients. And you don't need a lot of you don't need to get a lot of spices and all these sauces when you prefer to go to a grocery store and go shopping. You can take these really fresh, great ingredients and just make simple sauces and simple dishes. But really, taste something you like you never had just because of the great ingredients. It's really that's what cooking is about: taking the great ingredients and keeping it simple, and just cooking with a lot of love. And that's what makes great food, in my opinion. So. Uh, we got the root vegetables going. Here is our chicken that we put in the oven earlier. Okay, I'm going to flip it over a little bit. As I talked about earlier, what I did was I just left it skin down and put it in the oven and it just without doing anything it really created that perfect crispy skin for me. So it's really, you know, dummy proof and you don't really have to think about it just kind of throw it in there let the, let the oven do all the work for you okay so as we got the chicken out of the oven now I'm gonna get all of these great herbs we got uh, these herbs are from the A and H urban farm right here in Oklahoma City no pesticides or chemicals uh, but we got some oregano here thyme sage rosemary which is all great for poultry dishes a uh, dill, I'm just gonna leave out for today, but that's also an herb that you can get from them. Uh, so I'll use the rosemary, oregano, thyme, and sage for this chicken dish. And we're gonna let this cook a little bit. Okay, as the chicken is still cooking in the pan, I'm gonna take maybe like three cloves of garlic and just kind of smash it on your cutting board so it kind of releases that garlic oil. Uh, just kind of throw it in the pan uh, and just a couple of sprigs of thyme, a couple of things of sage, rosemary and oregano. And what we're going to do is we're going to baste the chicken with butter. Uh, it's a, this is a, just a French technique uh, that we cook with where you take some herbs and garlic and butter. And what you're gonna do, what's gonna happen is all those flavors of the herbs and the garlic is gonna go into the butter as they're melting. And you're gonna take that butter to kind of just base it over the chicken. 
to really add those great flavors that you're trying to get it in there. And as you see, all these flavors are kind of together, coming together. You can really smell it too, uh, with all those herbs and garlic going on. Crank the seat up a little bit. And I know uh, we're probably going to be doing more of these cooking series uh, throughout the next couple of months. Uh, Uh, so, you know, this is something different that you guys can all try at home. Uh, not a lot of effort. Just go to the farmer's market on the weekend, pick up a, a couple ingredients, you know, cook for your family. Nothing better than that. So, I'm just going to let this chicken just go in the oven for just, just a couple more minutes. Just to cook through. Uh, as we're waiting for that, our roastable roasted turnips and beets have been completed. So, I'm going to add this to our quinoa salad that we made earlier. Okay. There you go, all these great flavors going on with the turnips. And what I'm gonna do actually, I'm actually going to, let's see. Get some fresh turnip leaves. Just add a little green in there. It's looking a little boring. So let's do a little bit of turnip greens in there. So we can toss it together, add a little bit of freshness with the herbs. Okay, we'll just kind of toss it all together. And we already have the chimichurri made right here. We got the little quinoa salad with the roasted vegetables. So we're just kind of waiting on the chicken. Uh, so kind of start putting this dish together. Uh, so I got a little bowl right here and it's kind of like a buddha bowl you know it's very healthy uh this buddha bowl means something that's uh that's very healthy to kind of fill your mind and body i think that's what they call a buddha bowl uh, we have a version of this here at the jones assembly uh with a quinoa salad with some uh, uh sriracha maple sweet potatoes and some pickled vegetables and we make this like tofu tahini crema that we make uh, but this one is very similar. A little bit of quinoa salad, roasted vegetables, some turnip greens in there. Uh, I'm going to grab the chicken out of the oven now. Should be wrapping up here now. Okay. Yeah, I know a lot of times, like, you know, chicken can be like the most boring thing in the world when you go out to a restaurant and eat when you're trying to think of what to order. But really, when you try a chicken that's cooked properly, and chicken that is actually, that comes from a you know, good farm, uh, I mean, you'll, it'll blow your mind what a big difference that makes. Just, just by using the different kind of chicken when you're cooking. So as you see here, uh, we have the chicken thigh and the chicken breast right here. Just gonna let it rest a little bit uh, for a little bit longer. This chicken breast is actually not quite done yet. So I'm just gonna throw it in for a little bit longer. So during this time when this whole quarantine first started, I actually started cooking for my family because I realized I've been cooking all my life, but I'd never really cooked for my why for my kids uh, for the most part so kind of felt guilty about it so I started cooking uh, 
think the first couple of weeks, you know, I've done, I did a lot of cooking of uh, Korean food just because with my profession, I never worked at a Korean restaurant. I own a small Korean restaurant, but I never actually cooked Korean food as a professional. Uh, so one thing I really want to do is really kind of you know, go back to my roots and kind of cook the stuff I remember my grandparents made for me or my mom made for me uh, or what I ate in Korea. So that's kind of how I spent my time the first couple of weeks. Then I kind of got sick of cooking. Uh, uh, so just spending a lot of time with family, kids, you know, uh, trying to just you know, be the dad I never could be when I was always working all the time. But it was actually... You know, there's hard times, there's a lot of bad stuff going on, but there's also some positive that we can get out of this and that, you know, with all these hard times, but there's still some good stuff happening. So you know, try to enjoy this time, uh, to stay positive. We'll all be back, you know, hopefully very soon. Uh, once we're all up and back up at the Jones Assembly, everybody come back and we'll have a big party again. So I think the chicken is getting very close. Let's pull that out. All right. So here we have the beautiful airline chicken breast that we cooked up and a little bit of thighs. So I'm going to cut the thighs up. Let's go. Okay. Like so. this beautiful local chicken, we'll turn it, quinoa salad, and we'll finish a little our chimichurri that we made earlier. And what we can also do is kind of make a small salad out of the grains that we got. Uh, we're going to dress that with a little bit of chimichurri. Toss it around. It's a very good, simple salad. Good. And we're going to finish up with a little bit of beet tops chopped up. And here's the pan roasted chicken with a quinoa salad with our local greens and a little beet tops and turnip and chimichurri. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Hopefully everybody will get through this very soon and we'll see you guys at the Scissor Tail Park Farmers Market once we're back in. Thank you.